Well, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the farm. So we've got a fun, quick little project going on out here in the barn this evening. About a week ago, I picked up a pellet stove from Menards. It is a Pell Pro brand, P-E-L-P-R-O. Picked that up from Menards. Dad's coming over this evening, and we're going to get that thing installed here in my workshop so I don't have to continue to freeze my fingers off while I'm out here working in the evenings because it is starting to get pretty cold here in southwest Ohio. So here's a little unit. It should be a pretty easy install. We're just going to have to use a hole saw, get a hole through the wall all the way through to the outside. We'll be using some of this double wall insulated chimney pipe to get it vented out to the outside. And since this is like power vented, like it's forced exhaust, it does not have to go all the way up the side of the building for, um, oh, what do they call it? For draft, like a normal chimney would have to. It, we can just go straight out, and then we're going to put a little rain cap on it. You'll see all of that. But So it should just be one hole through the wall, and then this building isn't tight enough that we have to worry about getting um, a vent from outside, a fresh air vent in also. So it should just be the one hole, hook it up to some power, get it all caulked up with some, uh, some heat-proof silicone, and we'll be ready to rock. So... Let's get rolling. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this long drill bit and I'm gonna drill through the wall. And what I've gotta get figured out is I've gotta make sure, run out here real quick, when I come out with my hole saw, I need to end up between ribs and get on as flat of a surface as possible. We don't wanna try and end up having our hole come out in one of these deeper ribs. Cause it'd be an absolute pain in the butt to try to get it weatherproofed. So I measured outside from the corner of the building to about where the center to where the center rib is with about where I want it to land on the outside. So I took that measurement, I brought it to the inside, I factored in the thickness of the wall and then subtracted that because I can't get all the way out to the wall if you can see my tape back there. So I subtracted that number. So I was um 13 feet 2 inches and then I needed to subtract about 8 and an uh, eighth yeah eight and an eighth so then that took me to um 12 foot six uh 12 foot five and seven eighths yeah 12 foot five and seven eighths so i'll come in here to 12 foot five seven eighths and then here on the back of the stove i used a second tape to find about where the middle of the hole is which is a little bit more than 12 inches so over here at my spot 12 foot 12 foot 5 and 7 eighths, yep, that's right. And then I'll put my tape here. I will mark where a foot is. And then that's where I'll drill my pilot hole to make sure it shows up on the outside. And I should be relatively close, but if I am just a little bit off, the hole saw should be able to cover up any mistake that I make, both on the inside and the outside. You know, if my pilot hole is a little bit left or right of where it needs to be, the hole saw will work just fine to cover that up. And if it's dead on perfect, then the pilot bit in the hole saw can go straight in the pilot hole that I'm drilling with the long bit. So let's drill a hole. Uh -oh. Well, here we are. We came out close enough to the center that there should be plenty of room. For the hole saw, we can go ahead and use this bit as our pilot hole with the hole saw and get our hole cut out here. All right, so you may have noticed a tool change there uh, halfway in between went from the hole saw to the jigsaw. And when you're using a hole saw, make sure that that pilot bit is tight inside of the hole saw. My bit was loose. It danced around. It created this goofy hole, uh, goofy pilot hole. And then as you can see where all the 
the paint is worn off of this. It had my hole saw dancing all over the place. So I had to switch over to the jigsaw, but got a pretty decent hole cut. I'm happy with it. And then used the, I don't have a jigsaw or a hole saw that size. So I had to use the jigsaw in here for where this is going to sleeve through the wall. And then the stovepipe sits in the middle of it. And now as we start to sleeve together all of our pieces of stovepipe, we are going to do all of the joints with the high temperature silicone, especially the joints in here coming right off of the stove and anything that is inside of the structure. We're gonna make sure we get it a good tight seal with the high temp silicone to make sure that we don't have any smoke migration back into the building. So I'm sure as you all can understand, duty called there for a minute, so I had to set the stove project to the side. It's now a couple of days later. So like I was just saying, Gonna take the high temperature silicone, gonna sleeve together my pieces of stove pipe, uh, both onto the back of the stove itself and going out the side of the building. Gonna make sure I get a good tight seal with the silicone to prevent smoke migration working its way back into the building. So this is probably gonna be the most crucial joint with the silicone. So I am gonna make sure that I glob it on, both on the connection coming out of the back of the stove and on the inside of the stove pipe where they're going to sleeve together to make sure that I get a really good connection, a really tight connection. All right, now that I'm through the wall, I consulted the instructions and I need a, at least a three inch clearance in the back. And so I went ahead and just did it at four. We're four on top. And then I know I'm in there pretty square because I'm also four on this side. So now on the outside, I will put this uh, weather cap, I guess. You know, this will go on the end to make sure that rain can't get into the pipe and work its way back inside. But I also purposefully gave it a little bit of run, just a little bit of pitch downward outside, just to make sure that there's no moisture migration back up into the stove itself. And on all of these numbers and everything, guys, make sure you're consulting the instructions with the stove that you bought. Not all of them are gonna be the same. This is not a how to install a pellet stove video. This is just a video about me installing a pellet stove. So disclaimer, that's all this is. Okay, got my end cap slipped on out here. Got it sealed with the high temp silicone, just like inside. I propped it up on uh, these couple of boards just to make sure that it dried. Uh, I put a level on it, made sure it was nice and level, just to make sure that everything stays where I want it until that silicone dries. So I gotta give that silicone a little bit to harden up, and then I'm gonna fire this bad boy up, and we will bask in warmth inside the shop. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about uh, getting the pellet stove installed. I've had a lot of fun putting these videos together as we have been putting my shop together back here. So I'm going to keep putting these out there. Hopefully you guys keep enjoying them. If you did enjoy it, think about hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, y'all, we will see you.